Aloha. You're watching F5 On Demand. I'm Senior Technical Marketing Manager Peter Silva. We're at the Sands Expo at the Venetian in Vegas for AWS reInvent. We're in booth 721. If you're at the show, please come on by and visit us, learn about solutions for the application world. And once again, we have Nathan Pierce, who's also a Senior Technical Marketing Manager. Thanks for joining me again, Nate. Good morning. Ming, it's 11.59, I was just checking, it's, yeah, it's morning. <laughs> what time is it in the UK right now? I don't know, that's a bit complicated for me right now. <laughs> now back to our program. <laughs> so you might have seen the, uh, we just did a cloud bursting uh, video, so maybe check the one down below or above or somewhere out to check it out, but you might have heard about the F5 synthesis. It's our architectural vision comprising of three components, the high performance services fabric, which is essentially our platform, the intelligent orchestration of those services, and then the simplified business models for you, our customers, to make it much easier to ensure that no application is left behind. And if you saw the uh, cloud bursting, video, we actually just switched spots. That's pretty <laughs> magical, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> he loves that stuff. So this time, you know, the cloud bursting piece is really a, a temporary a temporary solution. Yeah. Um, it's a short term requirement for, for increased workload, but, but it's, it's traditionally very short. It's first out what you need. We track the workload back in your data center for, for a single service or application maybe. Right, and so now let's talk a little bit about cloud migration. So it's not a temporary yep. situation, it's more of a either permanent or long-term type of scenario where you're putting your applications out there in the cloud. We're definitely not talking about wind patterns when we talk about cloud migration, we're talking about migrating a line of business or, or a department to a cloud provider. Um, so yeah, let's, let's, let's go through a, a, a scenario, use case. So um, we talk a lot about a hybrid cloud because there are a lot of organizations that have certain applications that can't leave their data center yet. They still don't go through the data classification or, or maybe there's governance reasons. But they've still got plenty of services, maybe tier two services or, or non-production, non-customer facing applications that could very easily be taken out of the private data center and moved to a cloud provider. And the business benefit to that is they're then freeing up more expensive private data center resources for their primary kind of tier one applications that, that that have customer data, et cetera, that they want to keep close, and that they're able to use those re reuse those resources uh, and move the, move the tier two apps out um, into a cloud provider. And so that was one of the, the hesitancies, right, when cloud first came out, was losing control of certain critical applications. Exactly. And so you were mentioning uh, potentially tier two applications. That wouldn't necessarily be email. Would email be a tier one, tier two? Like, what are you, what are you talking about when you say tier two type applications? Yeah, it, it varies from organization to organization. I think a lot of companies, what they need to start doing is, is just sitting down and going through a bit of a data classification exercise. In some companies, email is got to stay internal, it's all encrypted they digitally sign emails. In other organizations, it really doesn't matter. Um, and some, I've heard of large corporate organizations throwing the whole lot out to a, a Google Mail type service sure. because that's fine for them and it's, it, it meets their security requirements. So I, I don't like to kind of dictate that there's a, you know, a type of app or a type of service. It's, it's up to every organization. But I think every organization's definitely got apps and services that could easily be pushed out into a cloud provider. Yeah, kind of the first step is figuring out what those may be versus just you know chucking whatever out there. Yeah, exactly, and a bit of fingers crossed networking and see what happens. So yeah, let's go, let's go through a, a customer scenario. So, so one of the most popular ones, um, and this is one we've written a, a reference architecture about, and in fact, in this morning in the general session, keynote session, they, they validated that. Dev and test is still the most popular popular department, uh, business unit, be pushed out to an infrastructure as a service provider. Um, what these guys need to be able to do is replicate their internal environment exactly the same, so when it goes out of production, it will work the yeah. same. But the problem they have in a lot of dev and test is you've got previous versions of an application, they have to keep those environments running because they've got to support them ongoing, they can't just delete them and, and, and make them go away. And then they've got to constantly ramp up brand new environments. You don't want a team of developers sitting around for two, three weeks while you get new infrastructure sure. in and build it up. So there's a lot of equipment sitting there because it might need to be tested against, and then a lot of need to spin up brand new environments. You can imagine how much wastage you get in your data center. So 
these environments typically are virtualized. Many data centers are virtualized now. So wouldn't it be great if you could just lift those virtual machines, take them out of the expensive private data center, and just have those guys run straight out of a cloud environment? Cool. Brilliant so, idea. Did you come up with it? Um, yes, it was my idea. No one had ever thought of it before me. No, well, we didn't come up with the idea, but what we're going to talk about now is how to do it safely. So I mentioned before that it has to be a common experience, the yeah. same experience they had in their own data center. So if I lift out, let's say, this little server here, this is, this is an instance, this is a developer, and we say, right, we're going to move your team, and we're going to throw you out into this environment. Now, in their private data center, they're, they're a very clever organization because they've invested in F5 technology to keep it fast, available, and secure. Um, if we throw them out of the cloud environment and get them developing without that same security policy, delivery policies, then, then what's going to happen when they bring that back in and put it into production? Right. Things aren't going to be quite that good, are they? Especially a WAF, huh? I imagine a web application firewall with all the, all the policy built into that, um, protecting against cross-site request forgery, SQL injection. Anyway, back to cloud. Um, so what we are able to do, because of our virtual editions, which run on all of the hypervisors, including Amazon's, very important. We can spin up these same AD services in a virtual edition, and then using our very cool Big IQ Cloud, we can make sure we push the same policy for the delivery and security of that into that cloud environment. So when it comes to finishing an iteration of a development cycle and then pushing it, it's gone through test and you want to throw it to production, we can bring the policy that we've been managing with our Big IQ Cloud um, technology, we can push that into the ADC framework in your data center as well. So there's no surprises when it runs uh, in the real environment, so yeah. That's kind of cool, so being able, so it kind of works in a lot of ways, being able to take, say, a current policy that you have here, have in this location, you, you migrate everything over, now you're working out of this environment with, say, this policy. Yep. And then as you're doing testing, all that you know, development piece, probably a new policy is then generated due to the you know, testing and other such stuff. Correct. And then being able to then take that policy that was kind of yeah. tested, built on this side, and bring it back into production to either coexist or even replace the previous policy. Precisely, so your, your software divine application services, the things that are keeping all of this running, making it all agile, it's consistent across the board. And, and we, use, we, we do this using our, our IAP uh, technology, so we've templatized our configuration. So instead of having to remember hundreds of commands and, and you know, mouse clicks to, to perform, we build it into this policy and we can push that policy around with the application. So this is what we manage with our big IQ cloud product. So, you know, pushing the policy for the delivery with the app at all times and keeping that up to date. Um, so this is really important. There's no, there's no inhibitor, uh, and no kind of, you know, late night fingers <laughs> crossed, what's going to happen when I roll that over at Sunday at 1 a.m.? Um, it, it should just all work fine and that's, that's what we enable organizations to do. Excellent stuff. Always love hanging out with you, Nathan. We have great funny? conversations. It's always fun, huh? <laughs> yeah, cool, man. <laughs> love it. Well, there you have it. A little bit more about our cloud migration reference architecture. These are, how, I was been, I've been kind of you know, explaining our reference architectures as the, the proof points, right? The proof points of our F5 synthesis. Yeah, it's the business use case of why would you do it? I could, I could come here and just talk about you know, analyst reports on infrastructure as a service, but it doesn't tell you yeah. what's it going to do for my business? How's it going to make my life a little bit easier? That's, that's what our reference architectures are all about. It's that validation right. of why we built the technology in the first place. And being able to, to essentially grab it and deploy it today. Yeah, exactly, yeah, nice. yeah. Ah, oh, good stuff. So, reporting from Amazon Web Services, the sign's right up over there, the AWS reInvent Conference. We're in booth 721, if you're at the show, please come on by. So, for my good buddy Nathan, I got Natasha behind the lens again. Thank you, Natasha. I'm Peter, and we're with F5 Networks. Thanks for watching. <laughs>